This is 2 News. Coverage you can count on. The FAA is investigating after a part of a plane's cabin fell out mid-flight. New details from passengers who are on board ahead. But if we hit white out, we'll turn around and coming back. With snow hitting the Sierras at the moment, many drivers cautiously made their way about, but others were not prepared for the conditions. A closer look at the current travel conditions and a look at the forecast. Stormwatch tops two news at five o'clock. Well, winter weather is finally here. Good evening. I'm Josh. Many thanks for joining us. Many parts of our region are seeing plenty of wind and even snow today, but is it going to continue into the weekend? We start off with some Stormwatch team coverage tonight. Reporter Jaden Urban is live at Gold Ranch with a look at the travel conditions. But first, let's check in with meteorologist Angela Schilling for a closer look at what to expect. Angela, it's looking like last year. <laughs> now, here's meteorologist Angela Schilling with your first look at the weather. Yeah, it is bringing back flashbacks uh, from last year. This is a pretty strong storm, uh, especially when we compare it to earlier in the season. This is probably the most powerful one we have seen yet. Through tonight, driving impacts remain high for Donner as well as Mount Rose Highway, moderate at least for Lake Tahoe, and for Reno, it's moderate as well. It's a fast-moving system. Overnight tonight, it will mainly just be the leftovers. The main frontal band is moving south of I-80, and that's where the majority of the snow is. So you can see here in dark blue, you can also see a break and then there's another band up to the north. But then once we get on the back side of that second one, we just have a couple more snow showers. So this will wrap up by around 10 p.m. Here's a closer look at it. And here's the main frontal band. It's down to our south and then we have a break and then we have a second band up to the north. But again, pretty fast moving system, but it will remain slick overnight tonight. So here's another look at it. It's quickly moving down to the south and then we have another band just to the north of I-80 and then behind that it's much quieter so we don't have much longer. In fact, now the winter storm warnings will expire at 10 p.m. So they have shortened it. That goes for uh, the Reno area as well for the winter weather advisory. That now goes till 10 p.m. Now below freezing in Reno, even out at the airport at 29 degrees. Most of us are below freezing right now, so watch out for some pockets of ice and snow-covered roadways. Winds are lighter than they were, but they are really howling earlier today, even in the valley, well over 50 miles per hour and tomorrow will be cold, but it will be dry for the most part at 8 a.m. A temperature of 21, but overnight lows will be in the teens. It will still be slick tomorrow morning and can rule out some lake effect snow in spots, but most of us will be dry tomorrow. But again, it is going to stay dicey tonight, mainly because of the leftovers. So we'll have a full here forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Angela. With snow hitting the Sierras all day, travelers will want to check out their road conditions before heading out. Jaden Urban is live for us at exit one near Gold Ranch. Jaden, there's plenty of snow down here. What are the conditions looking like out there? Yeah, Josh, well, honestly, things honestly cleared up a lot here in just the past 30 minutes or so. But at one point, both sides of the I-80 were closed due to multiple spinouts. But as you can see behind me here, the 80 is now back and open on both sides. Now, reminder, though, chain controls are still in effect and officials are saying to avoid travel if possible. But if you do, to be extra cautious. And earlier today, I spoke with some travelers that were trying to get out of here before the pass became too dangerous. Oh, good God. You know, I mean, it's kind of like the basics. <laughs> you can't see when the wind comes up and blows the snow, which is why they closed the pass. Uh, you got icy conditions. It's just not good. The whole thing is just not good. Man. Travelers I spoke with said that they tried their best to prepare by bringing chains, shovels, extra water and food. For some who have driven for many winters over the interstate, they say it's not their driving they are concerned about. other drivers and their ability in the snow. I've been driving in it since 16 years old and I'm 62 now, so I've been driving in this stuff for a long time. And even the longtime vet Brian said if there were whiteout conditions over the pass, he would turn around. Now we'll have more updates on what the pass looks like here at 630. But in the meantime, you can check out Caltrans website, which you can find in our news link section on our two news website. Covering the story live from Bird Eye, Jaden Urban, two news.
All right, thanks, Jane, and thanks for keeping us posted up there. The storm response doesn't stop there. Road closures and chain controls have been in effect all over State Line and Truckee this evening. We have a live look at some of those closures. You can see here that much of the area is requiring chains for all vehicles, except with those with four-wheel drive and snow tires, which is indicated by the solid blue line on NDOT's map right there. The blue dotted line means that chains or snow tires are required, and the red line indicates that the road is closed. To check Nevada road conditions before you leave, you can dial 511 or check Nevada 511's website. We have a link to that site on 2news.com. And we're hearing from many viewers throughout today that the winter weather is causing issues with their NV Energy. As of the most recent update, about 62 customers were without power, but that number was over 26,000 customers this morning. As a reminder, you can check the current outages and report an outage on NV Energy's website through your personal account. We can also contact the company directly. Their customer service line is 775 eight three four 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 and to report outages and emergencies you can call them at seven seven five eight three four four one zero zero and developing tonight as Jaden mentioned earlier in the show there have been a few spin outs near Gold Ranch and Nevada State Police say that applies to much of I-80 so far all that police were able to confirm is that there are several spin outs and crashes along I-80 going into California and Washoe Valley they've not been able to confirm how many cars are involved but we will keep you updated as soon as we can I-80 reopened to traffic through Donner Pass about a half an hour ago and as we learn more about the storm moving through our area, please stay with 2 News for Stormwatch continuing coverage. We are on air, online, and on the free 2 News app and 2 News weather app. Today is Dia de Reyes, or Three Kings Day, a yearly celebration of the Three Kings meeting Jesus with gifts. For many Latinos, it signifies the end of the holiday season. The most recognizable symbol of the holiday is the Louisiana-style king cake, which has a small figurine of baby Jesus hidden inside. I remember the first time I had one of those in the holiday also known as Epiphany in Eastern Christian religion, it is traditionally a day to feast, sing and attend church services, and spend time with loved ones. It's also customary for Christians in some areas to remove their Christmas decorations on Epiphany Eve, and if you don't, it could be bad luck. And we are learning some new details on an Alaska Airlines flight from Portland, Oregon last night, during which a section of its cabin ripped off midair. The plane had only been airborne for about 20 minutes before the pilots made an emergency landing. Rick Demigela has more. Shock and terror on board Alaska Airlines flight 1282 Friday night after part of the fuselage blew off shortly after takeoff. Alaska. Passengers reported a boy's shirt was ripped off his torso and out through the gaping hole in the jet. I guess a boy and his mother were sitting in that row and his shirt was sucked off him and out of the plane and his mother was holding onto him, onto him and she said her own little boy's phone went out too. The airline says the plane took off from Portland, Oregon, bound for Ontario, California, with 171 passengers and six crew members on board. The flight reached 16,000 feet after takeoff when the panel, including a window, ripped off. Typical flight, took off. Uh, pilot came on, said, oh, we're crossing 10,000 feet. Keep your seatbelts on for a while yet. And shortly after that, you heard a big loud bang to the left rear rear, like in row 20. I woke up to the plane just falling and I knew it was not just normal turbulence because the masks came down and that's when the panic definitely started to set in. The pilot was able to safely return to the airport and land the plane with no major injuries reported. A team from the National Transportation Safety Board is now investigating the incident and Alaska Airlines announced it was temporarily grounding their entire fleet of Boeing 737-9 MAX planes. The Federal Aviation Administration also ordered the temporary grounding of the model of plane involved. I'm Rick Damagella reporting. 
The Alaska Airlines CEO says he is working with Boeing and regulators to understand what occurred and personally committed to doing everything he can in a timely way. Coming up, today marks three years since the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. We have a closer look ahead. 